Hey you folks, Quill18 here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Kerbal Space Program. It's been a while since we've done a straight up career Let's Play, and we are doing it because I am on the 1.2 experimental build. You can see the version number down here, 1.1.99, basically. It's just the experimental build for version 1.2, which adds a lot of stuff, most notably the ability to build uh, satellite networks, use satellites to do some biome scanning, all kinds of awesome some stuff like that, incorporating some of the concepts uh, you may be familiar with from such mods as things like remote tech and ScanSat and different things like that. The approach is a little bit different here, certainly doesn't replace the mods, but maybe those mods will incorporate into these vanilla features in the, in the future. Also been some tunes to the user interface, fuel flow, and a bunch of other things we're going to discover as we go forward. Standard disclaimer does apply, since this is an experimental build, things may break, but uh, hopefully we're still going to have a lot of fun along the way. So let's go ahead and get this started. Worth noting, because none of the mods have been updated for 1.2 yet, we are going completely, completely modless. Most likely as we go forward and as this becomes, instead of experimental, it becomes the official release of 1.2, most likely we will be incorporating some mods down the road. In particular, something to help us calculate some Delta V is always really handy. So we're gonna go ahead and make a new career mode. Take a look at the options over here. Uh, what we're gonna change, a couple of things. First of all, missing crew members are not gonna respawn anymore. Otherwise we will leave everything on default, but if we lose someone, they are dead. Uh, you'll notice here there is a button for whether comm networks are in Enabled. We're going to leave that on. And under advanced, we're actually going to go ahead and even set the require signal for control. If you don't put this on, you will still be able to control probes even when they're not connected to the network, uh, but it will be whatever partial control is, which actually I don't know, and I'm almost wondering about you know what, maybe I'll leave that off so that we can experience what partial control means. But um, we will try to play it that uh, I'm betting it's that you can turn some things on and off or something, but we'll see. I'm going to I'm going to leave that off. So we'll see exactly what we can do to interface with probes when we don't have a signal. And uh, we can always just role play it that we don't have the ability to control the probes when we are out of signal, depending on how it goes. Otherwise, I think I'm gonna leave everything as is. Let's go ahead and get this started. Hit start. I don't have my flag loaded in, which is unfortunate. I'll have to see if I can just put that back in later on. But uh, because there's some rapid updates and patches and things, I don't wanna go and messing with, the, um, with my custom mod, which basically just adds a flag. Hello, Gene Kermit. It is a pleasure to see you again. Very excited to be back doing the curbling. I have to say, as someone who plays with mods pretty extensively, it is quite nice to see like, and I know this has been in since I think 1.1, the new Sky Shader, but it looks so nice actually. Like you used to get, you need things like Scatterer and whatnot to get the sky to look as nice as this, but it's quite, I don't know, like the, the sort of distant haze and uh, how the horizon changes a little bit. The moon looks quite lovely over there. I don't know, I like it. Um, so standard operating procedure for us to get started. By the way, if you haven't played before, this will be kind of tutorially for you, although I'll try to go fast. We'll try to explain what's going on. We're gonna start by going to mission control over here, uh, which is very easy to miss, but we're gonna grab some contracts so we can get some early money. First contract, gather scientific data from Kerbin. It can be anywhere on Kerbin, including on the ground to complete this. We're gonna get an advance on this one, and then when we complete it, we'll get some more money. All overall, 6,400 Kerbal bucks and one tick of science by itself. We're gonna take that. And we've got a mission to launch our first vessel as well. So that'll be worth 3,200 Kerbal bucks overall. And it brings us from 25,000 starting funds to 28,000 starting funds, plus the reward once we actually finish this. <clears throat> so that's it. So we need to get a little bit of science and we have to launch our first vehicle. So let's go to the vehicle assembly building and see what we can do there. Hello, Werner von Kerman. Nice to see you again as well. Um, at some point between 1.0 and this 1.2, uh, some of the font rendering changed again to look a lot nicer. In fact, I, I'm not sure if 1.1 had this quite nice font rendering. I have to say, I really like the, the extra polish there. I don't know when it came in, but I'm really happy that it did because I think it looks quite spiffy. So... We are, we are hardcore Kerbals, of course. Default Kerbal um, tech progression makes you start with manned pods. We don't do unmanned pods. We simply don't have the technology to run uh, computerized um, command modules right now. We need someone in there to drive. And that someone is, of course, going to be Jebediah to start off with, a very classic there. Other than that, we don't have a whole lot of parts unlocked. We don't have fuel tanks. The only type of engine that we have are solid rocket boosters, which we are going to throw down over there. And this is going to be our little starter pod. Easy peasy. Command control has got nothing. Structural, we've got the girder segment, but we're not going to use that for anything. Fins, we, I don't think we actually need the fins for this first one. So I think I might, I don't know. Tell you what, let's go ahead. Let's use a trio of fins. Don't want to go too low because I don't want to land on the fins because the fins are extraordinarily fragile. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that. We really won't need them for reasons that will become obvious relatively soon. Under Utility, we do have a Parachute. That sounds pretty important. And then under Science, the only science that we have is the Mystery Goo Containment Unit, which we will go ahead and equip. I'm just going to throw one on here. And I'm going to put it, uh, I guess, over there. Although, because of reasons, I actually might want to have it somewhere else. But ah, that's fine. All right. So there we go. This is our very first little launch thing. But what I'm going to do... First is, I'm going to go and take the amount of fuel that's in here and drop it down. So by right-clicking on this booster, you can bring it way down. Because this, I don't trust this to go very far at all. We want to just do a microscopic little hop, and that's about it. Hey, what? We'll go ahead and bring a little bit more fuel in, but I will also bring down the thrust limiter. And we're going to talk about thrust calculations later on, but that should be pretty good. So this vessel here, I'm not even going to bother naming it. We're going to throw it on the launch pad, and we're not even going to launch it the first time. No, no, no. We've got Jebediah in here. We're just going to make sure that all the systems work. We're going to get a crew report from Jebediah over here. Record the crew assessment of the situation. Excellent. Notice that things have changed a little bit over here, and especially over here. This is our signal strength to the uh, Kerbal Space Center. Also, we are correctly receiving data from Kerbin itself. We have a direct connection there. We don't have the ability to transmit because we don't have an antenna, but we can get some information from there. Um, and of course, Jebediah can drive just fine. So we get the cruise assessment of the situation. It's only worth 1.5 science, but we're going to keep that. And we're going to open the mystery goo container over here on the surface. Goo doesn't seem to be doing much, but right now it's worth three science. We could actually run it a second time and get a little bit more science, but that's not really going to be something we're concerned about. So we're going to keep that. And then we're going to recover the vessel right away. Just a little, you know, test, make sure all the lights turn on, but we're not actually going to go anywhere. We get that science. Great. We get to, um, we could have made the ship have a couple of goo canisters and we could have also had another way of resetting the experiment from inside of the, uh, the crew report experiment, but we're just going to do that. That's fine. That completes that one mission as well. I'm going to take the escape the atmosphere mission. Not that we're going to complete it right yet. And we're going to go and relaunch the same ship over ship over here. That was just auto save with Jebediah confirmed that he knows how to push the right buttons. So we're going to try to actually, actually launch this time. I didn't check my staging. I was going to say it's probably entirely wrong and it is. So there we go. So we split the staging up over here so that we've got the rocket on stage one. So when we hit space, the rocket will launch. And then if we hit space again, it'll deploy the parachute. We don't have a lot of fuel in here. We're not going to go up very high, but let's see what happens. Now we are tipping over because of the weight of the goo canister, but otherwise things look okay. Also, I didn't turn on the SAS. So that was a bit of a mistake. We're going to observe the goo above the surface here get that information. It wobbles a little bit. We're going to get a crew report. Shore looks inviting as you watch the waves roll off the coast. Excellent. We're going to keep that experiment and we're going to hit space again to deploy our parachute. We're just one kilometer over the ground and that basically um, the ground here is almost sea level because it's quite low and we're going to drift gently down and hopefully slow enough that the engine won't actually smash on its way down. I'm going to hit the um, the physics warp here so we can get there a little closer. Physics warp can be a little bit twitchy if you've got a particularly large ship. Every now and again, it could shake itself apart um, as the physics are being simulated at four times normal speed. But with such a small ship like this, we're perfectly 100% fine. So that's our launch pad over there. We didn't go very far, but that's all right. And we're going to land. And we're going just above six meters per second. I think if the fins hit, I think their tolerance is six, but I think the engine is about eight. So we boop, just bop down there on our engine and everything is great. We're going to go ahead and recover that vessel as well. Lovely. So we didn't complete another mission, but we have unlocked a fair amount of science. We're currently sitting at 27 science. So we're going to go to the research and development lab over here. We're going to unlock basic rocketry so that we've actually got the uh, fuel, liquid fuel engine over here, the swivel one. Swivel still comes first, which always seems a little bit odd to me um, because the Reliant, which doesn't swivel, comes later. But the Reliant is cheaper and has much better thrust, especially in the atmosphere. So if we look at the max thrust here, the swivel has about 170 kilonewtons, and this one here has 200 kilonewtons. It's also slightly lighter. It's only 1.25 tons as opposed to the 1.5 tons. So the Reliant is more fuel efficient, but that gimbling is really important. Gimbling means that the, um, the actual rocket thrust can be angled a little bit, which means you can steer with your engine as opposed to just reaction wheels or movable fins. We also get a bigger solid ro rocket booster, and we also get a fuel tank. So we're going to unlock that. We're going to go down to Engineering 101 over here which is going to give us an antenna. In fact, two versions of the Communitron, um, because this is the extendable version of the Communitron, and this is a fixed version, surface-mounted. It doesn't have to be extended. It is a little bit heavier, though. 
um, but doesn't have to be extended. We also get a stack decoupler and a science junior. We get a new science experiment. We have 17 science left over, which as actually enough for survivability, which is nice. I mean, survivability in general sounds very nice, uh, but in particular, it does give us access to the heat shield as well as radial parachutes. Now, for our next flight, our goal would probably be to get science from the upper atmosphere because we've gotten science from the lower atmosphere although not the material bay yet we want to go upper and we can return from the upper atmosphere easily without a heat shield in fact there's a good chance we could even return from touching the edge of space and coming back down without a heat shield um, assuming we don't go orbital but this will make things a lot safer and the radial parachutes are quite important if we want to return with the materials bay because materials bay is very heavy and one parachute just won't cut it so i'm going to be very happy to unlock that and again we don't have uh, we, oh, no, we did finish, that's right, we finished the science one, so we've got the escape the atmosphere mission, we've also got the orbit Kerbin mission, which we will want to do, uh, apparently that, that expires in five hours, really, oh, no, five hours after you take it, yeah, 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 okay, so it'll never go away on its own, it's just once you take it, then you've got, um, basically one day, one day is six hours, I think, in Kerbin time, to, to handle that. Um, we're going to be a little further away from that. It'll be nice if we can get a few of these missions to test components at the launch site, because this gives us a little bit more money and technically a little bit of science for doing something that is very, very easy. And we will need some more money relatively soon. Right now, we mostly need um, just science to unlock some more stuff, but we will need money later on. I, we can take this, uh, this hammer one. It's really easy. All you have to do is stage the part when the conditions are met. So for an example, so this is the hammer solid rocket booster. So we could test this by making a new ship, grabbing the command pod, and actually I'm gonna stick the science junior on here so we can test that. And this is the hammer. So we need to stage this on the launch pad. We have to just hit space on the launch pad with this. But what's interesting is it doesn't actually need to have any fuel in there. We basically just test to make sure all the valves open correctly and everything like that. So this will allow me to complete the mission to test this rocket booster, but won't actually go anywhere. Not even putting a parachute on this. Awesome. And in fact, since I'm sitting on the ground and we've got a new science experiment, we're gonna go ahead and observe the material bay on the ground. So we're 7.5 science. That's not bad at this point. One of the samples is judging me slightly. Okay, fair enough. So we get that test and I'm gonna hit space to launch the SRB, except it doesn't go anywhere, but again, all the valves open up, and it's quite happy. And there we go, we've tested that, we get 4,500 Kerbal Bucks, and we can just recover the vessel. Really, really cool, okay. So we complete that mission, and then we can keep taking some of those missions. Anywhere where it's on the ground is very, very easy to do. A few of the others require specific circumstances, like this parachute, you have to open it up uh, from this altitude at this speed, which actually is something that we're gonna be able to do more or less automatically. And that's a lot of money. Now, anyone that you test that's on the ground isn't worth very much. Anything you test with um, more and more difficult um, circumstances pays you more. In particular, if you have to like test something in orbit of the moon or something like that, you'll get a lot of money. So that's actually probably worth taking because that is a lot of money right now. But again, right now we're mostly looking for science. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a um, rotational stability test. Yes, it's a very important rotational stability test. So here, I'm in the, in the space place, space plane hangar instead of the vehicle assembly building here. We're gonna grab a command module like that. Then we're gonna grab two science juniors, just hold alt, click, and then you get to copy it. Followed by another command module on the other end, mostly just for symmetry over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick a goo canister on each end of this bad boy. We're gonna put one here and one over here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the second command pod is uh, piloted by Valentina over here. They can both, this is, we don't have um, one of those centrifuges, you know, to spin the pilots around to make sure that they don't get too sick and they can handle the G-forces. So instead, we're just gonna build this thing. The command modules have reaction wheels so they can change their angle. They can pitch, yaw, and also um, roll, which is exactly what we're gonna test here. First of all, we're gonna get a crew report from the runway. Every biome in the Kerbal Space Program, you can do science there. So we've already gotten the one from the launch pad, but we can get information from the runway to make sure everything's okay. Same thing with the mystery goo and the material bay. 
So we're going to go ahead and collect that science over there. So we get all the science from the launch pad. The, the doors here are not actually physics enabled, but if you want them to, you know, look a little bit more sensible here, you can close those doors again. And that's great. Okay, so we're very happy about that. Now we're going to start the roll test, and we're just going to roll sideways to the left off the runway, which is not a very nice runway. We're going to have to upgrade that later on so it's not all sandy and bumpy. I'm going to roll off here, and there's a slight slope. It's a bit hard to see, but there's a slope. And when we get to the bottom of it, we will no longer be considered to be part of the runway. Now, you don't just want to hold Q. Q and E is how you roll, by the way. <clears throat> you don't just want to hold it down because you'll go too fast, and you may spin yourself apart and break. So we'll just gently roll down the hill. So now on this flat part, I will no longer be on the runway, but I will still be at the Kerbal Science Center. So if I run some experiments over here, so we can get you. There you go, material study from the Kerbal Space Center, not Science Center, Space Center. So we're going to get another material study. We're going to get another crew report. This is Valentina's crew report as opposed to Jebediah. And then we're going to get this material goo over here. Goo seems bored. Oh, don't, 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 take, don't be so hard on me. So we're going to recover this vessel. So the rotational stability test was successful. In addition to that, we got a little bit of extra science. Every one of these buildings over here at the Kerbal Space Center is actually its own biome. So if you do manage to go over there, uh, you can run experiments there. I'm not going to roll around with that particular device to do that, although you could. You could very easily roll to any one of those with that device and collect some more science, but we shouldn't have to do that too badly. So we have 34 science now. We could unlock general rocketry, <clears throat> but we can actually live without this for now. Same thing with stability. We can actually live without this as well. What I really want to do is work my way over to basic science over here so that we get more science experiments. In particular, the too hot thermometer over here would be quite nice, not to mention some batteries. Um, this is also a new part here, the experiment storage unit. It's awesome. Basically, you can right click on this and it will grab any science that's sitting in another part, like your goo canisters or your command modules. <clears throat> you right click on this and it'll collect all that and suck it into here so that while well, the reusable experiments you'll be able to reuse at that point, which is really nice. But more importantly, it means it's very, very easy for you to say detach, like use your material bay, collect the data into the experimental storage unit and then decouple the science bay before you return. This is much lighter. The science bay is extremely heavy. This is very, very light. And so returning with this is a lot less painful. I love that. I think that's great. So I'm just going to save the science for now. I'm really looking to unlock basic science and um, eventually also to get to advanced rocketry so that we can use the Terrier engine, but that's a little bit further away. So our next set of missions, we've got um, leave the atmosphere as well as test the Mark 16 parachute in flight over Kerbin at a particular spot. So let's see if we can bang both of those out. So we are, again, going to start sort of a new ship over here. Now, we're going to have to make a decision here. Mostly the decision is, are we going to do this with a Science Junior attached or not? Because, it's, again, it's very, very, very heavy. Um, I think we are going to do it. Because, and that is going to require that we have the, the radial chutes, but luckily we do have them. One, the, the one parachute, like nose mounted, uh, which we're still going to use just for aerodynamics here, um, would not be enough to slow us down to the right rate with this thing because it's extremely heavy. This is, is a little overboard with the amount of parachutes, but at least it's nice and symmetrical and that's going to be okay. We're going to throw, um, I'm going to throw a couple of goo canisters on here. Because what we're going to do is we have goo canister information, obviously, from the ground and also from the lower atmosphere. But we're going to try to use one in the upper atmosphere and then one in space. Ideally, I would like to have two material bays for space here, but it's just I think it's going to be too heavy um, and too hard for us to launch. So we're going to go with that. I could throw an antenna on here so that we could transmit data. Actually, we could transmit the data from our crew report. But I think we're going to have plenty of opportunity to do that later on. So mostly I'm just going with two goo canisters because it's symmetrical. We're going to make sure that we've got a heat shield underneath this because this is indeed what we're going to be returning uh, home with. We're just going to we're just going to kiss space and then come back. We're going to try not to overkill it, but the heat shield will still probably be handy. Then we're going to grab a decoupler. And then what we're going to do is use a whole bunch of these little fuel tanks. Now, the sort of weight and capacity of these fuel tanks is exactly the same, whether it's the small one, the medium one, the larger one, etc. Um, there is a price efficiency if you're using the bigger ones so you do spend less per volume but using a bunch of little ones is as good as using a couple of big ones for example so this will work but the big question now is how far will this get us will it go up with mods you could have your delta v calculation done right away and actually the math to calculate the delta v 
isn't that bad, but it's kind of tricksy, and mostly we're not going to be worrying about that. But what we are going to worry about is whether our thrust to weight ratio is sufficient to get us, well, liftoff. And is it? Well, if you click here on the engineer's report, you can get information about the weight of our craft. Actually, let me go ahead and get some fins on here. So we've got sort of the complete package um, set up. So um, this weight of our ship right now is 7.83 tons. Let's, just for the sake of argument real quick, let's round that to 8 tons as our ship. Now, the force of gravity, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we take, and let's round that up to 10, just for ease. So 8 tons times 10 means we've got a, gravity is pulling downwards on us with a force of 80 kilonewtons approximately. It's actually less than that because we've rounded a bunch of things up. But let's say gravity is pulling down on us with 80 kilonewtons. So how powerful is our engine? Well, if we look here, um, the atmospheric thrust, so that's at ground level, uh, so at sea level actually is what ASL is, at sea level, is let's call that 170 kilonewtons, which means our thrust to weight ratio is going to be slightly over two, right? Because um, 170 divided by 80 is just a little over two which means we will go up, and actually we will go up, with a significant amount of force. This means we can actually bring a lot more fuel with us, and we'd still be moving upwards, which would be great. So more fuel would mean we'd go further. And really, what you want to do, um, your thrust to weight ratio, you want to kind of target something about 1.25-ish, you know, 1.3, somewhere like that. As long as you're above 1.2 thrust to weight, your, your, ship, your, your rocket will lift off at a pretty appreciable rate. Technically, anything above one will mean you lift off, <clears throat> but at that point, you're spending almost all of your fuel just canceling out gravity. Um, having a thrust to weight greater than some, you know, than that number, especially when you get above two, means that if you run your engine at full throttle, you'll really quickly run into atmospheric effects. You'll run into Mach effects that will slow you down. Uh, you will get heating effects, all sorts of things like that. That means, again, you sort of lose efficiency. And so you would just, you could throttle down to prevent that, but it also means that you're not bringing as much fuel as you technically could to, you know, go as far as you want. That being said, while we have a little bit extra kick here than we need, I think this is going to be more than sufficient, more than sufficient for us to reach space. In fact, in Kerbal, just like in real life, reaching space is actually surprisingly easy. It's not that challenging. And, you know, b practically people in their backyards can just do it. The problem is staying in space because going orbital doesn't require that you go really high. It re requires that you go sideways really, really fast. So not only do you need enough thrust to get up high enough to reach space, you need to then go sideways fast enough to not fall back down and hit the Earth, but rather fall back down and miss the Earth, or in this case, Kerbin. Anyway, I think this is going to be perfectly fine. Check the staging over here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split off the nose cone shoot slightly differently because we have a mission to deploy this at a specific set of circumstances, certain height and a certain speed. Um, and really it's making sure that our speed is within these bounds while we're within this altitude. And I think it's gonna be fine, but if need be, we could pre-deploy, like if we're going too fast, we could pre-deploy the side shoots, slow us down a tiny bit and then deploy the nose cone one. Um, but yeah, I think we're good. So who's gonna have the honor of reaching space first? I think we're gonna go ahead with Jebediah. And then maybe Valentina will try to see if we can get her to be the first one to orbit, which would be very exciting. All right, let's go ahead and launch this one. We're still not going to go and name this. This is still a pretty basic ship. <clears throat> so um, we actually have, we have to but sort of pace ourselves with the science experiments. Ideally, I would like to use the material bay in space because it's going to be worth the most possible science. Um, and I'll probably do... I'm not sure with the, the crew hatch. I mean, ideally, yeah, get everything from space. Since we can't transmit the uh, the crew data, we'll we'll just wait for there. But I will try to get a goo report in the upper atmosphere. Anyway, we're going to turn the SAS on this time so we don't forget. We're going to go to th full throttle, although we will almost certainly be throttling down relatively soon. Um, and, yeah, let's go ahead and launch. So we're going to launch at a pretty decent clip. This is, this is a lot of thrust here. And, in fact, we are definitely going to have to scale back. I'm going to scale back to around yeah around here i'm still accelerating what feels like pretty good so i'm happy about that i'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a gravity turn here um this becomes very important if you're going um if you actually want to go orbital but even here what we want to do is we want to come back more gently if you come straight down 
then you effectively have less air between yourself and the ground for you to slow down. Where if you're going sideways, you're going to cut through a lot more air and therefore have a lot more opportunity for your ship to slow down before you hit the ground. In particular, it gives you more of an opportunity to slow down to the point where you're not going to rip your parachutes off when you deploy them. So we're accelerating quite quickly here. We're starting to see some mock effects, some air effects here, because we're accelerating pretty fast. I'm going to go and bring the throttle down a little bit more. Of course, as you burn fuel, then your thrust to weight ratio, oh, that's a little too low, thrust to weight ratio um, improves, so you're going even faster and faster. If we go and hit M for the map view, we can take a look at what our apoapsis is, and space on Kerbin starts at 70 thousand meters or 70 kilometers so hopefully we'll reach there looks okay oh, we can see the darkness we are now in the upper atmosphere so we're going to go ahead and do our mystery goo here 17 um, kilometers is i believe where the upper atmosphere starts so goo seems to be getting very cold now indeed it is and we're gonna throttle down just a scooch here and there we go now did we get to space yes we did in fact i could have stopped a little sooner i'm gonna go ahead and stage and we can, uh, I guess I'll keep the SAS on, that's going to be fine. So once we cross the 70 mark, we will indeed touch space. We've got some new milestones for altitude and speed. Take a look at our electric charge over here. As we were ascending, our electric charge was staying maxed out because there's an alternator in the engine, but now we are on our internal battery. However, without any life support mods, the battery should not drain other than when we're using the reaction wheels to steer. With SAS mode on here, technically it might be using a little bit for stability, but there's so little air over here that it's gonna buffet us sideways that it's very unlikely that we're having to use much SAS to stay stable. So I'm very confident about power. Moon, we are coming for you. Not, not today, but soon. And there we go, we have entered space. Let's see how Jebediah is doing. We're gonna get his crew report over here. Seems we're very much in space now. This guy seems to be mostly below us. I'm gonna keep that information. We're gonna run our material bay. Microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose objects are also flying around the bay in a very messy but fascinating way. 25 science for that, excellent. We have to remember that we still have to do the upper atmosphere science, um, material bay. Actually, we also have to do lower atmosphere one. And mystery goo, while in space. And Mystery Goo, we are, I believe, all done um, on Kerbin, other than on the ground doing different biomes. There's our ascent stage over there, going away. Goodbye. Again, the, the doors here, I don't believe are physics enabled, but just because it looks cool, I will close the doors. And that's that. So we're gonna reach our peak at 92 kilometers, almost 93 kilometers above the surface of Kerbin. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and initiate the time warp. This is different from physics warp. It actually freezes the physics. And I'm just gonna let it cross through the 90 on the way down. As soon as we re-enter the atmosphere, the time warp will stop. Boom. Because you can't time warp in the atmosphere. And I'm gonna turn to face retrograde. That symbol means I'm facing retrograde. And more importantly, it means my butt is facing into the direction that I'm moving. And in particular, I'm gonna hit this button over here to look at the surface mode. Uh, which is which will automatically the, this uh, the nav ball will switch to surface mode automatically when you get low enough into the atmosphere but i want to specifically make sure that my butt is facing into the wind because this is where my heat shield is now if you're returning with just a command module and presumably a heat shield um, it's aerodynamically stable enough that you could just turn off the sas and it will automatically keep facing into the uh, into the wind which is exactly what we want but this shape here because of where the center of mass is it uh, will actually be quite keen to flip over so we're going to leave SAS on and I'm going to manually tweak to make sure that I'm facing retrograde over here later on when Jebediah gets better or we use a better probe we'll be able to lock to retrograde and that becomes very very handy uh, it is worth noting in the past though uh, locking to retrograde on re-entry like this would crush your electric charge because the SAS was very, very, very um, active and enthusiastic about making corrections. Um, and apparently, the SAS has been tweaked here. It's quite hard to keep that, but we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. I'm just going to pre-deploy these shoots here as soon as we can. Oh, we're not actually going to be able to do the... Uh, I would have needed drogue shoots. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, we, uh, we did not hit uh, safe parachute deployment speed um, until after we were below three kilometers. So I was not able to um, deploy this shoot, which is unfortunate. What I could do this again with drogue shoots. Drogue shoots are smaller and tougher shoots that don't slow you down enough to land safely, 
but can be deployed at much higher speed. And so what I would have done here is deployed the Drogue, it would have become safe. I don't know if you were looking, but in the staging over here, the parachute symbol went from red, which was dangerous, and no, like, do not deploy now, you'll tear them off, to yellow, which is risky, to, um, I guess, just the white icon, which means you can deploy them. Now green means they have been deployed. The Drogue shoots are deployable much earlier, and if I'd done that, we probably would have been fine. Or if I'd come in as more of an angle. I think I came down quite steeply, and uh, I think if I'd come down at more of an angle, we would have been okay. The other thing too is we come down, we don't slow down as quickly because this is an incredibly heavy component. Very, very, very heavy component. Uh, let's go and get some physics warp here. Um, and makes it a lot harder for you to slow down uh, at the rate you'd want. I think if we just came back in with just the command module, we would be okay. And in fact, since we've got our material study from space now, uh, when we go and launch our first orbital mission, we will do it without this, without the goo canisters as well, uh, which will save us a lot of weight, which makes it a lot easier for us to enter orbit, and will maybe give us a better opportunity to test this. So right before I hit the ground, I'm going to go and cancel the physics warp, just in case anything weird happens. And what I could do here for technically a little bit more science, now I can't do another crew report because there's already a crew report there. They've already like written in their notepad. But if I tell Jebediah to EVA at this point, he can take all the data that's in there and then store it in a proper compartment. Now what I can do is I can ask Jebediah to give me an EVA report from Kerbin's Waters. So that'll give us a little bit of science. I can then re-enter here and I can do another crew report from the water and get a tiny little bit more science, may as well squeeze it in. So let's go ahead and recover this vessel. Jebediah will return home a hero having just touched space, just kissed space. Look at this, we have 117 science here. We are just, we earned 62 extra from that. Brilliant, lots and lots of science. Uh, what I need to do now, so um, I do wanna unlock these experiments, but I also, the question is, I think I can get everything. Mm, yeah, just barely. Oh, that's that's good luck, because I want the Terrier engine. Terrier engine is very inefficient within the atmosphere, but is super efficient and light um, for space usage. So this is a really good tool to have to enter orbit. You can go orbital without it, but that just makes your life a lot easier. And then we're going to unlock this basic science package, which gives us the two hot thermometer, which means we can science even harder, which is brilliant. Mission control over here. So we still have to test that parachute. We're also going to take the mission to orbit Kerbin. Now, right now we do have a maximum of two contracts. If we went, and I can right click here and upgraded the mission control center, we'd be able to get more contracts simultaneously. I'm going to save the money for that. The first priority will actually be to upgrade the launch pad. Almost certainly the ship we're going to design to go into orbit is going to be too heavy for the current launch pad because it has a really low limit, only 18 tons. I mean, our last ship was eight tons, so you know we can we can certainly go up more, but uh, it's relatively cheap to upgrade, and almost certainly this is going to be the first thing you run into. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that launch pad. That's going to be okay. Go back to the vehicle assembly building, and we are going to design our ship to send Valentina into orbit. Uh, but we're going to have to put a cut in here first. Hope you're enjoying this series. Looking forward to continuing this this a new career run, which is always really exciting. And in particular, exploring 1.2, playing with the satellite network, doing all that kind of jazz is a hoot. So uh, make sure, if you haven't done it already, do subscribe and do all that. And of course, it's the first episode of a uh, series, which is why I'm going to ask if you guys can like, favorite, subscribe, uh, comment, share, all that. Really makes a big difference on the first episode. And uh, thank you very much. We'll see you guys next time.